Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from ICM. It's an aircraft kit in 148 scale and it copies B-26K, it's a counter invader and as you can see it's a US Air Forces Vietnam War attack aircraft. So it is based on B-26 plastic but this time we get slightly different version which was not released before and what I'm doing at the moment I'm checking what other kids I mean when the first release happened so first release of the B26 plastic was in 2019 and now we have this kit in 2021 by the way there will be also another option with a drone it will be sold as a separate kit so stay tuned for the separate video review but today we will talk about this particular kit and this is a commercial sample so it means you will get exactly the same stuff if you get it or buy it somewhere as you can see kit number is 48279 we have quite nice box art and box is really huge so here you can see comparison with my hand and here on the side you can see also some information about this kit and frankly speaking i again do not see black on black that's really strange choice of the let's say lettering but box contains 344 parts and wingspan will be 455 uh, millimeters which I would say normal for a twin engine aircraft in 148 scale frankly speaking we all expect a bigger model when we see such stuff in 148 scale and here you can see four markings which are included into this kit we will talk about them more when we will be checking the assembly manual because it also contains the marking guide and by the way box is sealed with these tapes from all four sides so that's why I'm going to cut through it right now and in the meantime I can remind you that you can support us with a small donation it's quite easy thing to do because we have a big red button on our website or you can just click join on YouTube video it's a button somewhere there and choose the amount you would like to send us so some of this let's say memberships they even give you a free kit every month so you'll be able to choose what you would like to get from me but all this money will be handy for uh, some new photo and video equipment or maybe even for new kits to be reviewed in our videos and articles so why i removed the box from the table because this is a bit of a tight fitment as usual with such kits from ICM so that's why I'm trying to open it and maybe some of you remember as I said in the previous video review some models just let's say not patient enough they tear it apart because I mean that's really strange experience when you try to push your way through opening this box and I really hope that in the future we will see slightly adjusted boxes which will be, uh, I would say, more easier fitment over this white cardboard box which actually protects everything inside. And here you can see what we have inside. So all frames are separated into several plastic bags but I would say packaging is more or less tight. So be careful while handling this kit. I would not recommend to place anything heavy on the top because it's easy to break everything. So we are going to start with this plastic bag and it's already the third minute and I'm still trying to open this kit. So that's just to give you an idea of how, let's say, simple packaging here is. So here we have pair of identical frames. So I will show you all first here. This is an external equipment which will be fixed on the aircraft and I guess that's a specific equipment for today's version so uh, feel free to write it in the comment section if you're familiar with this topic I will be happy to learn more but you can see here we have these bombs and they look quite nice I guess it will be easy to assemble them just give me a second to swipe away the dust which was left by the box so here are these parts if we flip them over inside you'll find these guiding elements they should be easy to work with and of course they will be helpful in uh, alignment of these parts together or you can just resort to some 
let's say a resin upgrade which will bring even more features to your kit but i would say these parts are okay for out of the box build here we have second plastic sprue this one is also supplied in pair so here again we have uh, rocket launchers we also have various types of bombs so it's really interesting that all this stuff was installed under wing of this aircraft and again i hope that there will be a loadout scheme for this equipment so that we can choose what we would like to use on our aircraft now i am opening now the plastic bag so just give me a second let's move this sprue aside okay and here we start with slightly bigger frame so this one is dedicated to wing parts let's zoom out so here you can see two halves for the wing note that engine gondolas are molded separately the same can be said about this bomb bay doors so i guess they can be assembled in open position but we will see in assembly manual external features they include recessed panel lines and rivets so if we zoom in here you can see these panel lines everything looks quite nice so it's just a matter of not losing them under several layers of coat i mean primer and paint and here inside you can also notice that engine gondolas they have some internal features and wing parts they actually have guiding elements and this is really important because these parts are quite huge as you, as you remember the wingspan will be almost half a meter so that's why it's good to have some alignment pins here and here as well so it will be um, helpful in the assembly process next we continue with engine well these are not engine parts these are landing gear parts here we have some exhaust stacks as far as you can see and again everything looks quite nice out of the box so it's uh, okay to use all these parts and i think it will give you a really nice result and what i like is for example this nose section that it is molded as a single piece part and it means you won't have to deal with any seams in such visible area but i suggest that we zoom in and check all these parts in a bit closer view so here you can see landing gear ox all three next we continue with wing mechanization also some parts for the cockpit pilot seat for example here we have this nose section as mentioned before few tanks some parts for landing gear wheels for landing gear wheels i would suggest to check edward because i think they released the wheel set brassine set for this b26 kit and that's definitely a really nice thing to add on the large model so definitely consider it and price wasn't that huge i would say so that's why it it might be a wise addition to uh, your build next we continue with two identical plastic frames for engine and that's why i will show you on the one here so in the left corner here we have one piece propeller we also have quite developed uh, i would say engine out of the box so it's just a matter of adding maybe some ignition lines here and there and that should be solved with help of p parts maybe and again p parts are not supplied here but you can get them as an aftermarket and again we can zoom in so that you can check all these parts even closer so here they are everything looks quite nice in my opinion and again it's cool to see this frontal section of the engine gondolas as a one piece part so you won't be worrying much about any possible gaps and seams in this area so it's pretty much the same thing as what i was saying with a nose cone on this aircraft and that's really cool because it shows that icm designed this kit with a let's say a bit of thought on how to make this kit even more 
and comfortable during the build if we can say so. Next we continue with a clear plastic frame, it was packed into the separate plastic bag and I really hope that just like in any previous uh, recent kit from ICM, aircraft kit I mean, uh, there will be a uh, mask set or mask template set in the assembly manual and it will be handy in such complex transparent areas as on this aircraft. Next we continue with one more grey plastic sprue, this one is dedicated to wing parts and also these middle bars which will be providing some rigidity to the overall structure, so that's what I'm talking about. And they are really important because of the large wingspan as I said before, so pay attention to their alignment with the parts and it will be important also how the wings will be affixed with uh, these parts, maybe with some CA glue, who knows. And now I'm opening another plastic bag. So here we have the last set of large frames and I guess these parts will be used for today's version because here for example you can see another pair of wing parts and we also have new engine gondolas front ends, we also have some parts for the engine so as well but I would like to zoom in so that you can see these parts closer because there are a lot of stuff pre-molded so for example here on the wings you can see these rivets, raised rivets and recessed panel lines so it will be a good idea to bring out this stuff with painting and weathering. Here we continue with the front section of the cowling, here we have also new instrument panel uh, some fuselage doors, here we continue with the lower wing panel, as you can see it is also uh, supplied with raised rivets, which look quite nice, and here is another frontal section of the engine gondola. So all this stuff is specific for today's version, you won't find it in the any of the previous releases, and again inside we have some guiding elements, so it will be uh, relatively easy to combine such large parts together. Next we have new fuselage halves, I would say the overall design is similar to what we saw before, as you can see both parts are molded together with a tail fin, but rudder is separate, here it is, and we also have uh, landing gear wheels which hook I would say okay for out of the box build, but of course it would be a wise idea maybe to get some resin upgrade. And let's zoom in, here you can take a closer look at the external features on these fuselage parts, as you can see they look quite good and they are not really deep. So as I said before pay attention to your let's say painting layers, but other than that I cannot recommend anything else and here you can see that we also have some internal features as well. That's really cool thing to see in a 148 scale kit, so maybe it will be visible also through the canopy even though this version of the aircraft it does not have the glass nose. So that's why all internals will be a bit more difficult to see on the finished model. Next we have these pylons for the external equipment, so they are supplied on the separate sprue, here you can take a closer look. These are quite simple parts and as far as I remember lower wing halves, they featured already let's say holes for these pylons, so you won't have to drill anything, you just get these parts, install them into the necessary area and you are good to go. Next we proceed with tail wings, these ones are also new, so here you can take a closer look and note that they are molded without any tail wings, I mean the elevators, so you have to install them separately. And last but not the least is this large sprue, so I won't be zooming out because we uh, it's better to check it closer, here we have another wing half, we have two new propellers, so as you can see they are a slightly different type from what we are used to see on this aircraft and what we saw on the previous sprues, and here you have some of the wing mechanization parts, they look also good, so it's just a matter of installing them into the right spots, so let's zoom out a bit, and... In the meantime I will take out the decals sheet, so just give me a second. 
Actually, there are two decal sheets and I will show you big one first and then we continue with a smaller one. So here it is. There is no mention where it was printed, but printing quality seems to be nice. We also have these anti-slip areas in form of decals. So in case you don't want to waste your time trying to mask all this stuff, you just apply it as a decal. And also here you can see some dials for the instrument panel. It might be handy for modelers who do not use PE parts in their builds. Then they just use these decals and they're good to go. Um, I do not see seat belts for the pilot seat but i see some stencils for example for the propellers so that's also handy stuff and of course seat belts can be replicated with your own tools or maybe aftermarket p here we also have a separate decal sheet with stencils so here it is it looks also nice note that some symbols are metallized i mean some decals so it might be handy for uh, fine i would say finish of your model Next we have two assembly manuals because this kit basically includes two kits inside. First of all we have this US armament um, for aviation. So these were the two uh, four first actually pair two pairs of the spruce which we saw in the beginning of this video review. As you can see this is an uh, armament which was used on US aircraft and of course it comes in 148 scale. Here you can see assembly guide for all items which are included on these frames. So as you can see there are various uh, rocket launchers, we have bombs and we have various pylons to hold all this stuff. So this is really impressive and we get it as a standard bonus for this kit. Here we have also stencil and application guide and marking guide so that you know how to paint all these, I would say, dangerous things. Next we have another assembly manual as I said before. So this one is typical for ACM. It is actually designed for the model itself, for the aircraft itself. So we have a short history note on the cover. We also have some technical specifications and paint chart. Next we proceed with the parts map. And here red color means obviously that these parts will not be used in the build. So pay attention and use the right parts so that your aircraft will be true to the proper version. And that's also the parts map. So as you can see here on the new spruce, we use almost all parts. Assembly process starts with a fuselage half. So we work on some interior elements. We assemble bomb bay and we also assemble the cockpit here. Again, a small reminder that you can upgrade it with P parts from Edward. Here we continue with Fuselage House. As you can see, there are fixed also with help of these wings parts. Then we continue with tail wings and also rudder. We assemble the nose section. And the overall assembly design is quite interesting. Do not forget about the 40 grams weight which should be placed in the nose section, otherwise you will get a tail sitter. Next we continue with main wings. So here we have all mechanization molded separately, also wing tanks are molded separately, so they will have to be connected with the main hubs, let's say. And then we proceed with assembly of these engine gondolas. So here you have to do the same actions twice. Be ready for that. It might be a bit tedious, but the final result should be worth it. And here we proceed with landing gear wheels. Also we assemble the landing gear legs and whole landing gear system. We also assemble engines for both sides. And then install them into the right spot. Next, here we have this one piece front sections of the cowling and it might be a wise idea to not to glue one of them or maybe both so that you can expose the engines on your aircraft. Next, we continue with these bomb bay doors which can be placed in open or closed position on your model. Here we install various antennas. And then we proceed with wing pylons on both wings, propellers. Here we have the possible loadout for this aircraft. So pay attention to what you would like to use on your aircraft. 
And here we have, so we have a template for masks. This is a really cool thing because as you can see all these areas, even the, some of the nose areas, they will be masked with help of these templates. That's a really cool thing. Next we proceed with the first marking option. It is supplied with quite descriptive, I would say, marking guide. The same can be said about other two markings. And here we have one more. This one comes from Special Operations Wing, US Air Forces late 1960s. Okay, so all in all we get a quite impressive release in 148 scale, definitely this is not, um, I would say, beginner's delight, so if you are just starting in modern hobby, uh, do not, let's say, overestimate your skills, because this kit will be demanding. And of course I will be happy to hear your opinion about such release, do not forget to write it here in the comment section below, if you like this video, Press the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel and I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today and bye!